This is Twit. Hi, guys. Thanks so much for joining us. Hey. Hello. We have, we have an exciting AMA lined up for you. We got Renee Rich- Ritchie from MacBreak Weekly. Uh, well, Flo everybody. Ion from All About Android, Paul Thoreau from Windows Weekly, and Stacey Higginbotham from This Week in Google. It's a crossover episode. <laughs> have you guys uh, worked? Have you guys met each other before? Is this is this some of the first times? Yeah, yes, I've, I've met, met I've, most. I've, sorry, I've met everybody but Stacy. But it's good to meet Stacy. Yeah, I've met no one but Flo, and it's great to meet Paul. <laughs> That's awesome. It, it does feel like one of those those crossover episodes um, where we get to pull in someone from every every Twitch show and uh, just uh, ask some um, questions from you, you fans. So um, I'll go ahead and get right into it. Um, the first question we have today is from Phil from Springville, Indiana, and uh, he would like to know what the hosts have on their desk tech-wise. Um, what do they use to get their job done? Computer, phone, mics, all that fun stuff. Um, who wants to start? Let's go with Flo. You're in my top corner. Okay. Um, so I actually recently wrote an article about this at my website, Um, It's called How Flow Works. So you can have like the full rundown of everything I use there, including the computer I use and the mechanical keyboard I built, um, which is my pride and joy, and um, as well as the mic that I'm using. So lots of uh, lots of little gadgets and gizmos surrounding me, as you can see, which also helps the inspiration. <laughs> for their nerdery. I love it. That's I love the star in the background. What about you, Renee? What, what's your what's your go to uh, go to trinkets? So I'm nowhere nearly as well prepared as Florence, but I do have a video going up on <laughs> YouTube, Renee Ritchie doc, whatever thing. Eventually, for now, I've got a twenty I've got a 2016 MacBook Pro, a 2016 16 inch MacBook Pro because I use a lot of Final Cut Pro, and I really need the screen size and the power and everything that goes into it. And then I just got a new Logitech Brio um, webcam because Andy Anako and Alex Lindsay were shaming me for my old <laughs> webcam, and I use the nice. Twit standard uh, Hail Heel. It's like GIF and GIF. I never know which way to pronounce it. Microphone just so that I can sound as close oh, yeah. to Leo as humanly oh, possible. Yeah. Nice. What about you, Stacy? Uh, sure. I have the the standard microphone as well. For I have the Logitech. I don't know what is this. It's the Twin <laughs> Cam. So the Logitech camera. It's so good. Um, I feel like I look awesome. Um, I have a MacBook Pro. Then I use that as my base computer for just about everything because mostly I'm just writing. My big tech splurges are all in the house because I do smart home stuff, and there I have. Lots and lots and lots of things. So we probably don't want to get into all of it. <laughs> all right. That's, like, that's good. I feel like we would be here for a really long time if we were going into so all of long. your guys' tech gadgets. Oh. And I'm on, a th- uh, I'm on a Pixel 3a. No one said their phone, but like that's right. essential right. for everybody's work day. I know it is. Mm. Oh, definitely. What about you, uh, uh, Paul? Um, I have an Intel NUC, uh, 10th generation Intel, uh, Microsoft ergonomic keyboard and mouse, uh, the, I would say Heil, I don't know, <laughs> for the microphone, which is like, like everyone else's, the, the Twit standard. I think that's most of it. I have an older webcam that I need to get replaced, C920 probably. Nice. I think I'm um, the only one here who is not using MacBook, by the way. <laughs> Oh, no, I'm not using one either. Oh, okay. Oh, I missed that part. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. That's, have you guys changed since uh, since work from home? I know you guys already really work from home, so there's probably no not a lot of changes, but have your setup changed at all? Uh, no? Mine has, because my daughter does school for mm. six hours out of the day here at my desk, oh. so I actually have to... I have a sad little, like, jerry-rigged... I, mean, I, I don't have my external monitor or my keyboard, so I've got this, like, box that I stand next to and type on. It's it's very sad. <laughs> it's I have figured out how to feed a... Sorry. 
I was going to say, I figured out how to feed a baby while sitting at my desk. So that's, uh, that's the new, the new normal. <laughs> my kids are slightly older, um, 18 and 21. <laughs> so, um, I don't have that issue. So my daughter's not going to come running in here and interrupt the show or anything. Um, unless the house is on fire, I guess. And then that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Then that's, a, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, what type of hobbies do you guys have outside of your technology field? That question's from Jim Solo, and he emailed it in. Do you guys have any any hobbies outside of the tech field? No. I, I do I, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. It's like kinetic, kinetic chess. It's the closest thing to a living video game I've ever found. It's very different than tech, so it sort of nice. balances out me sitting at a desk for or a, a standing desk for as long as I do. Right. I've been um, hiking. I go, I moved to Seattle this year so I could be closer to beautiful hiking places. So yep. when I'm not at my desk, I'm usually somewhere in the woods and I don't get to drag my family out. So that's sad. Mm. And I also cook. Cooking is yeah. awesome. I'm also into hiking at like Stacy here in California. There's lots of that to do. Um, I like yoga. I've been practicing it for a really long time. Um, and I actually, I would have to say because of how much I voraciously, uh, eat it up, reality TV is one of my hobbies. Um, I have a lot of group texts, uh, that go around during the week with my friends just discussing the garbage television that we watch. So it's a good pastime. It's a good way to just reset the brain with somebody else's garbage, you know? Yeah. <laughs> tuning at the end of the day is, is actually really healthy. <laughs> What's your favorite reality TV show, like all-time favorite? I mean, I'm a huge fan of the Real Housewives franchise. So. How many of those are there now? I think there's like 12. There's a lot. Uh, there, yes. And there so are also like secret Marvel Australian comics. ones that exist <laughs> that we do not get streamed here. So, And there are secret Canadian ones that are not Bravo affiliated. So yeah, I, that's why it's a whole hobby. It's a whole thing. I was supposed to Wait, discuss they, the secret Canadian, Canadian, Canadian real housewives. That's like the opposite of Canada. Yeah, they no, the housewives of Vancouver. Yes. Sorry, sorry, we're really sorry. <laughs> no, and the drama is better than what we have going on here, I'm telling really? you. Really? They're really? more oh, ruthless, okay. way more ruthless. Wow. Because it's cold. It's cold and we have to work hard to survive. <laughs> exactly. <water. laughs> I was just imagining it'd be way more passive aggressive and, and not as it is. That's why it's so ruthless. It's just like <laughs> extremely like, oh, God, that's really uncomfortable. What is she going on a boot? Eh? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. OK, so for the next question, um, what was your first computer and do you have a good memory of it? That's from Mark. And he emailed that question in. Do you guys remember your first computer? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You always remember your I mean, first. I re I remember <laughs> building a computer with my dad when I was young, and it I because wow. I remember going to the store to buy it was AMD chips because he insisted that AMD was better than Intel. Mm, um, yes. But it was like it was like a 486 processor. So, but I I think I'm younger than well I'm not younger than I'm usually youngest on Twit, but here no. So I think that was probably the first computer that I remember. Um, Mine was a Macintosh Performa 460. So yes. I remember when my dad brought it home, it was this giant box. I remember him lifting it out of the box. I remember I could never get Mario Teaches Typing installed on it. Like it would crash all the time. Um, I used it. I was the only one in third grade who would turn in typed reports. Everybody else wrote theirs. So that I felt very like, you know. Was that one a um, like an all-in-one or a pizza box style or what was the form factor? It was pizza. Um, it was That's the one. I guess it was the pizza like, box it? with the giant CRT yeah. on top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then it had like the one little floppy disk, and we used that thing like right. almost to the year two thousand. We just kept oh. using it. So yeah, it oh. was, and it was the slow computer that one of us that would get sure. kept. Uh, kept getting hand down to as a form yeah. of punishment. <laughs> well, eventually, yes. <laughs> yeah, 
my father was an IBM engineer. So when I was a kid, I would go down to his office and watch the pot, the punch card just to date myself, the oh, punch wow. cards being wheeled around. And then when the Apple II Plus came out, he got one at home so he wouldn't have to drive downtown just to use a computer. And he, like, he was just busy on VisiCalc all the time. And I remember going to the computer store with him and seeing like, it, it looks ridiculous now, but this beige box with the built-in keyboard and this only green display, and it was thousands and thousands of dollars, and you had to swap di- these giant floppy disks all the time. But to, and it had all these knockoff games, like there was no Donkey Kong, there was Beer Run. But to me, it was like <laughs> magic, just lighting up on the screen every time. Every time he would leave it, I would try and sneak on and play those games. Well, thank God for you, because I was afraid my story was going to be so out of date (laughs) that nobody would have any idea what I was talking about. (laughs) My first real computer was a Commodore 64, but before that, I actually had a computer adapter for the Mattel and Television, which was a video game system, Mm -hmm. and you could write basic programs that used characters from the games. And so I sort of taught myself how to program on that, and you had the little running guy that Intellivision had, and um, it it was really cool. And, you know, they probably sold three of them or something. But. And the pixels were a centimeter wide on those systems. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think the resolution was like 37 by 12. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was, it was really low res. Oh, man. Do you guys have, outside of your current setup, do you guys have a favorite setup over the years? Maybe not your first, but definitely your favorite? It's interesting. I am not a computer person, so like as soon as I could convert to like Macs, and I don't I don't have an iPhone, and I'm not a huge Apple fan, but like as soon as I kind of went to that, I was like, oh, this works. Let's keep it. I don't have to mess with anything. <laughs> right. So, um, I in 2010 I built pc gamers uh gaming machine of the year like i used all the specs that they had printed in the magazine and um went out and built it myself and i used that machine well into 2014 and i i miss it i miss it i had stickers on it i built it from scratch and i had stickers on it that said the beast <laughs> so, nice. r.i.p I just like an iPad Pro and a coffee shop. Like if you give me that, any back when we still had coffee shops, I would just like yeah. to post up at a coffee shop, open an iPad, and type away while drinking beverages. That's it. Yeah, that was. Weird. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. That was revolutionary when you could just go to a coffee shop and just be on a computer, but it was just so <laughs> small and and you could get so much work done. I remember that. Back that was a day, that was a really cool time. We used to yeah. see people. But, <laughs> Before the world's most mundane zombie apocalypse happened. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, you know, really the first laptop was probably like the best exciting, like the most exciting thing. I remember, you know. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I feel a lot of excitement. I mean, when I was taking the Chrome, when I was going out, I was taking my Chromebook, my Pixel book out. And mm-hmm. I brought that with me to some very interesting places. Uh, the beach, which I realize is, mm-hmm. I didn't go down to the to sand. Do. Just up up top where the where the picnic benches are, away from the sand. But you know, just, just computing to, out in the world. Did you take the gaming yeah. machine to the coffee shop flow though? Were you one of those people? Like you just no, post that, up with the gaming machine? Yeah, like, no, but I did I keyboard. did attend LAN parties for much of my youth. <laughs> so I am very used to traversing around with a giant PC box in my car. Nice. So <laughs> did you have the foam padded case for it? Or did you just like drop it in there and trust to God? I just put <laughs> towels down and just <laughs> pray to God nothing happened. I would seatbelt it in sometimes just to keep yep. it from <laughs> rolling around in the back seat. So that's yeah. always fun. Back seat? No, that's <laughs> going to be in the front seat. <laughs> you got to protect that thing. <laughs> yeah, well, my it didn't fit in the front seat. There wasn't enough room, uh, which is very, yeah. anyway. PC. This is why I have a laptop now and multiple multiple laptops. Much easier Gaming laptops are much easier to go around with. Right. So next question we have from Sean Monk, who also emailed it in. He said, what is your favorite smart home device? Renee, you have uh, 25 minutes for this question, so try to rein it in. No, that's the uh, <laughs> – mine is just – it's become the plug. Like when I, when I was first starting out, I bought everything, like the doorknob and like anything you could possibly do. And one by one, different issues arose with them. 
my other stuff that wasn't smart or they would promise me things like you could just say, yo, dingus, make me coffee. And it would, and it was just, the, the fantasy was never reality. So now I just have a bunch of plugs. The plugs all have names. I know what's plugged in and I just ask them to turn on and turn off. And that's the detente that we have reached in my household. Wow, that's pretty good. That's that's sad. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> so so my favorite yes. favorite device, bar none, and probably one of the most expensive is is my June oven. And I swear to God, they don't pay me, oh. you guys, for this thing. But I love it so much. I use it multiple times a day. It makes good food. It makes cooking so easy. Um, so that's like my favorite. I will say. The device I miss the most is probably my Wink Hub, which mm. I decommissioned. I decommissioned when I moved, but it was already on the down. It was on the downward slope, and everything just worked. I had every. It made things really easy. Programming it was easy. It was just like I had played with smart things, but it's a much more fiddly system. So that was my favorite, and now I'm I'm bereft and I don't have anything. <laughs> I just for the simple fact that I've managed to get a lot of people interested in them, smart bulbs. They have been the easiest thing to get in, you know, to get people around my life excited about um, using smart stuff in the home. My mom loves the little uh, LifeX bulb that I gave her. She gets so excited because she gets to make it pink or red or whatever. Um, the bulbs, they've proven super helpful with the baby because at night we don't want all this bright light. So I've been able to set everything so that it's a nice like ambient lighting. So nobody trips, you know, food can still be made for the little babe. Um, but it's not bright everywhere in the house. So <sighs> smart bulbs, just simple utility. And you know, what's going to be great about that is when your baby turns into a toddler and <laughs> you can actually set up this red light, green light system where like <gasps> you cannot come out of your room until this light is this color. That's or a great idea. Oh mm, yeah. I mean, so people smart. like they sell actual devices that do that, but it's, it's a good way to start. Like you set yeah. that on a timer. The, I'm sorry, I actually, the um, when you, when you, oh God, I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I was just going to say, I actually put a lampshade with dots over one and I created like a little thing for the baby, just kind of like in the room so that I didn't have to nice. buy a separate lamp to make this happen. So lots of, lots of projects. When your child becomes a teenager, you can use those lights in another way, which is by turning them on because it's 10 minutes past the time they were supposed to get on the bus to go to school. <laughs> yes. <And> yes. <laughs> they're down in their cave or whatever. Um, but anyways, as, as far as smart devices, we spent more on smart bulbs than I'm comfortable admitting to. And I don't know if Sonos equipment kind of applies. But honestly, the best thing we ever got was a – it happens to be a Lenovo branded, but it's a, like a Google smart display. Mm -hmm. And we just have it set up to go to a folder up in Google Photos that has just pictures that are automatically selected of family and friends. And so it just sits there and cycles through, you know, memories, basically. And like this time of year, you'll see things from this time of year and previous years. And we have pictures going back 20 plus years, really. And it's it's amazing how many times one of those pictures has started a conversation or, you know, you just have that kind of moment where you're like, oh, remember that? And and especially now when you can't really leave the house that much, it's kind of cool. Um, it's even it also, you know, better than usual. And you can actually share your Google folders with like a family member and then you yeah. hook up Duo yep. and then boom. Now, I can't do that with my family because my mom is anti-camera, anti-smart speaker. But for <laughs> yeah. other parents who don't mind, it's a good yeah. way to like stay connected. Yeah, right. You can send them. Yeah, they can see pictures of their grandkids or whatever. Uh, yep. And it's less it's less difficult than, you know, like, I don't know if you guys had the digital photo frames, but remember how you'd have mm -hmm. to like, yeah. you'd store <laughs> it in your SD card and then you pull that out and you'd give it to them and they'd be like, oh, I want fresh photos. And you're like, I Is hate you. Even making photo books, you know, just like, here's a here's your president. It's a book, a, a bunch of paper, <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so for the next question, um, it's from Lyle Go. He emailed it in as well. It's it's kind of specifically for Fernay and Paul, but uh, feel free to you know take your take your uh, pick on on which question you'd like to answer. But what is the moment in your work life that made you decide to pursue Renee, the Apple world, and then Paul, the Microsoft? 
But I guess an, like so, maybe Flo, you can you can do the Android or even Stacy the the Google. <laughs> When did we sign so our So for me, I was away? all in on Microsoft. Yes. Like I had, uh, Jorn I had an HP Jornada that I loved. I had, uh, I forget what it was, Windows 3 point something. Maybe they'd gotten to Windows 98 by then. I don't remember. I had an Xbox. I just, I had everything. And I kept watching Bill Gates get up on stage and say, you know, power of software. It's all going to work together. You'll be able to do it. <laughs> and it just, it just, back then it never worked yeah. together. It was this beautiful dream that I couldn't realize. And then uh, I saw the iPhone keynote and I was working in graphic design back then, and I had just never seen an interface that was that delightful. Like I was vaguely aware, I was using Dell computers, I was vaguely aware of the Macintosh interface, but it was all very slow and kludgy back then. And it was just amazing. And I had a Palm Trio Pro, I think at the time, and I just looked at that, looked at the iPhone, and you couldn't even get them in Canada. And I had just, I was immediately fascinated by it. And then the iPhone, sunk, it synced with the Mac and they kept adding more and more features that worked back and forth. And I'm like, this this is what I want. So I switched and eventually I got a MacBook and then I started adding more stuff. And as, as long as it even moderately works together, I, I find it really convenient and I just kept doing more and more stuff with it. Well, I don't know what this it working stuff means, Renee, but in the Windows world, <laughs> no, I am... Um, uh, you know, 25 years ago-ish, I mean, Windows, Microsoft was personal computing. I mean, it was kind of where it was at. So um, that made the choice for me. I mean, Microsoft was not a company that I respected or liked at all earlier than that. And it wasn't until, you know, Windows 95 and Office 95 and those products were, I, I thought the quality kind of started getting there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I it, I don't think I'd be so Microsoft focused today if I was starting you know, more recently or whatever, but um, certainly there's been ups and downs in the Windows Microsoft world or whatever. But um, I feel like they're in a they're in a good place today for sure. Um, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go next. So actually, um, trying to figure out a good way to explain this. So back in the day when I was younger and misinformed, uh, I thought that. I would stick it to the man and not have any Apple products because everybody at school did. Uh, in college, everybody had an iPod, everybody had a MacBook. And I was like, I don't, I don't want to be like the masses. So I started to look at other platforms, other MP3 players back in the day, um, other smartphones back in the day. They were PDAs pretty much, um, the Palm excuse me, the, uh, the trio. I think there was one that was on sprint that come out. Um, anyway, I got into Android just by sheer force because that's kind of all that was offered for me on my carrier at the time. And I also was like, Hey, it's not Apple. I'm going to go for it. And a love affair just kind of happened from there. Um, I am really attracted to this community. And as I kind of, became more of a part of it. I just felt like, you know what, this, this really resonates with me. And I just, it, it feels like being with my own kin. Like it's just, it's a great community to be a part of. Um, and I, it, it's just it makes me happy <laughs> to be a part of it. So, yeah. I, I don't identify with my, they're just tools for me. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> How dare you not be emotional? I know. I'm like, <laughs> these work. I, I, I do Google because I like Google and I have a lot of things on it and they have lots of great offerings and Apple Walled Garden just frustrates me. So, but I, I'm really... That's also I a good back. reason. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I go back and forth in my day to day because I've got to test all kinds of devices and most people have Apple. So. Okay, Stacey. So specific question for you. What is your favorite Google product? Oh, that's a hard one. Yeah, they have a lot of really, I mean, like search is like, I, that, I mean, that is like, I spend like 90% of my life there. Um, mm -hmm. I really like the new recorder project or product, um, if that's really a product um, and the transcription that it's doing, that's really astonishingly good for my job. And then probably maps just because I am the worst at directions. I can't tell my left from my right. I once got lost on my own street. And so maps is like my, my savior. And I hate Android wear. That's all. 
That's a good start. <laughs> so this next question is um, actually uh, for Paul. Uh, have you considered switching to a career in programming? That question's from Mike Asherby too, and it's from Instagram. No. <laughs> no, um, I. No, it's a hobby for me. I mean, I, I oddly enough, I mean, back when I did get started in the early '90s, I did go back to school to become a programmer, and then life occurred, and it kind of went in this other direction. But I've always maintained a connection with that world. And I think the reason he's asking is because I've been working on some programming projects later lately, but I'm, I'm just an amateur. I mean, I'm not, it's, it's fun as a hobby and I hope I can, hopefully other people are inspired, you know, um, to try it out and learn programming. And certainly we have a lot of free time on our hands today. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. uh, it'd be one of the many things you could do with that extra time, but no, I don't, I'm not going to become a programmer. Okay. And then specific question for Flo uh, from Ben King on Twitter. Um, will you have the opportunity to review the Surface Duo? I mean, I certainly hope so. I'm definitely like saving my cash right now because I want one. And I have a feeling Ben's asking me this because I keep mentioning how badly, how much I'm looking forward to this particular device. Um, so for now, I'm just thinking about it constantly and I hope that I will have an opportunity to integrate it into my life somehow. We'll see. We'll see how it works. <laughs> okay. And then this question is uh, specifically for, uh, Renee, uh, in the past decade, uh, Apple was shifted its focus away from the visual professional to the everyday consumer. What will Apple do to retain their pro user base in the next two decades? Or will they? And that question is from Billy Hills, 90210. Wow. So I don't, I don't know if they did like visual professionals as a choice. You know, they were originally like Steve Jobs' grand vision was just to democratize computing to get it into the hands of everybody. And the Apple II Plus did that, but the Macintosh did not. IBM and uh, Windows and the PC just ran rampant throughout the ecosystem and they found a niche with visual professionals, but they always wanted to be computers for everybody. I think that's why they came up with the iPad because for some people, PCs were still alienating and weren't accessible and weren't approachable and they just wanted a way to directly interface. And uh, I think Apple did, you know, they sort of quasi, well, they abandoned pros for a while to sort of feed into that vision because of the success they had with the iPhone and the iPad. But pros are very vocal, and in the last couple of years, they're they're trying to step back into that category. Maybe overshooting it a lot with like the Mac Pro, which it's geared towards <laughs> Pixar engineers and ILM studios and things like that. But I think they're they're with things like iPad OS and the iPad Pro and uh, steps like that, keeping the Mac mini at least basically rejuvenated uh they're trying to strike a middle ground the pros are always the noisiest like the most vocal the most um loud the people on social media i just hope that apple doesn't abandon that dream of the everybody though because it's hard to serve multiple audiences and i think there really is a lot there really are a lot of people who aren't as vocal but who really really need computing that works for them mm. okay oh go ahead whoever was going to talk no Oh, I thought I heard something. Um, so next question I have uh, from Bullware. What new skill trade slash trade have you looked into during the COVID pandemic? Any new skills or crafts? I have one that you guys will like. Um, awesome. One, I am screwing up sourdough bread. Um, and two, <laughs> I am. It's impossible to screw up sourdough bread. Okay, I'm not. Well, okay. No, that's not true. I actually did screw up my last loaf, but that's okay. <laughs> um Kevin, my colleague on uh, the Internet of Things podcast that I do, he sent me a build an 8-bit computer from scratch kit. Ooh. From So it's eater.net. It's somebody named Ben Eater. Um, so if you go to eater.net, there's an slash 8 bits. Um, there's a kit. So right now I'm, I'm building the clock module and it's super old school. I did this when I was a kid with my dad. But basically, since we talk a lot about embedded computing and all of that fun stuff, you know, I was like, okay. And because Kevin sent it to me, I was like, well, I got to do this. It's my Christmas present. So that's what I've been doing when I'm not, you know, baking wax paper into my bed. <laughs> I am working on getting better at product photography. It's kind of something that I've, um, that I've done as part of the job, but I've never really spent time learning how to, how to use the camera that I have um, to kind of make certain shots work. 
Granted, I don't have like the most high end equipment, but I want to figure out how to make the equipment and the lights and things that I did invest in, how to make better use of it. So I figure now is a good time to kind of try out some new stuff. Um, so that's, that's what I've been doing. I've been shooting B roll and just playing with Lightroom and just trying to get better at this stuff. So for me, it's been sort of like necessity. I chose this as a perfect time to quit my day job. So I've been <laughs> having the fun of trying to relearn how to make websites, which I haven't done in a decade and setting up a discord server, which I've never done. Uh, and I, because my, my old, my old YouTube channel was owned by the company I worked with. I had to figure out how to do, and they just handled everything. They're future is this massive, massive company that does everything. And I had to start all over again. So basically every skill that I had taken for granted over the last decade, I am, I am now like a fresh out of college and trying to the, the lowly intern at my own business and trying to figure out how it all works. It's going sometimes not great. Sometimes. Okay. If the world really goes to hell, I, I will be best used as a source of food for other people. Um, I don't have any <laughs> skills um, that you know translate into any, anything true. useful. Um, I mean, I, I, this predates the COVID stuff, but I've been working, like I said earlier, on those programming projects. So I've been learning just different frameworks and languages and kind of moving along, and I'm going to continue doing that. And I, uh, I don't know that that's a, a hedge for some future, but um, I certainly could be for many people. So it's, it's certainly a useful thing to try. Yeah, it's crazy during this time. Everyone's kind of trying new projects and 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 really stretching their limits on what they can do um, inside the house. Uh, have you guys been, uh, you know, any media you guys have been listening to? Any music? Any movies? Uh, podcasts that you guys obviously are twit podcasts. Hopefully, um, <laughs> but any other uh, podcasts or any media that you guys are listening to? Sure. I finished Netflix. The ending was lame. You <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, it starts strong, then you get to yeah. the B stuff. Uh, Animal Crossing, Animal Crossing, Animal Crossing. Oh, yes. That's pretty much what I'm doing whenever I have a free chance. Uh, like, I will just rock the baby on my knees and play Animal Crossing. <laughs> so that's how we are spending our time together at home. <laughs> I, I'm watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine again with so my 13-year-old. I know, and it's like basically Parks and Rec was my like, when, when Trump was elected, that was my like feel good television. So now I need <laughs> right, another right. Michael Schur comedy. You know, I'm like, OK, so that's what we're doing on the media front. Oh, Bing yeah. and rewatching The Expanse. Oh, yes. Oh, God. So good. We do the 30 minute show at lunch every day. So lately it's been 30 Rock, which is another one of those shows. It's just consistently yeah. excellent. Um, but I listen to a lot of Wondery podcasts if I'm walking back when I used to drive places, <laughs> you know, um, like true crime type stuff. But um, Did you yeah, listen to watching. the Tiger King one? No. <laughs> I mean, we're going to watch it. My daughter that. recommended uh, that, the Netflix version of that. So, yeah, we'll, we will watch that. That's on the queue. But we've got, you know, just different channels have different shows that are great. So we just try to, you know, plow through those as we can. I just finished The Clone Wars, the latest season of Clone Wars on Disney+. Plus. Mm -hmm. I love the Star Wars TV shows way more yeah. than the most recent movies and now i'm doing mythic quest on apple tv plus which is way better everyone raved they said there's a standalone episode in the middle that's just one of the best hours of tv in a long time and it's it's true it's like it's, it's just a bunch of dorky programmers i don't know how mainstream people will listen to it but if you've been on the internet for a while they're speaking our language trying to make a video <laughs> game uh, which is nice. like the modern version of cheers i guess and it's it's been a lot of fun i got two episodes into that and i i'm not sh i'm like do i have to keep going what? <laughs> the, the middle one is really good. I don't know if I'll finish it, but the, I got to the middle one that everyone was raving about. I'll go further then. Yeah, I'm all about the the Tiger King. That was one crazy documentary. I was that was a roller coaster, roller coaster of emotions. I, it's like Breaking Bad to me because we didn't watch it for a while because I was like, how are we going to watch a show about a guy who makes drugs? That makes no sense to me. And I look at this Tiger King. I've not seen it. It looks so white, trashy, and you know, like just. Like, how could this be any good? But my daughter, who actually has pretty good taste, I have to say, um, recommended it to us. So, I mean, we're going to give it a shot. And I've heard a lot of, you know, a lot of good things about it. Yeah, I felt the same way. Okay, so next question. Um, this is from Lyle Gold as well. He says, anyone know the best and absolutely free launcher for a senior with an Android TIA? 
what a TIA? Thanks in advance. Yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I think it's six and That's TIA. the only thing. It, it might be an period, HTC device, but I'm, I'm going to stick with thanks in advance. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not very technical. What does the acronym TIA mean? Um, I was hoping you guys would know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know the acronym, but I do have a suggestion for a launcher. Um, I actually brought this launcher to the arena many, many months ago. It's called Before Launcher. It's a super minimal launcher in the Play Store. It's supposed to help reduce distractions, but I found that it's just like a nice launcher for just having a lot of, just having it be simplistic. And what it does is it lets you choose, I think, the eight most used apps, and then those are on the home screen. And then you just swipe up and it's every app on there in you know a giant list alphabetically uh, ordered. So I found that to just be the easiest launcher to use. And then you swipe over, it's all your notifications. Um, and it's, you know, lets you choose between a bunch of basic colors. So it's easy on the eyes. Um, yeah, before launcher, it's in the Play Store, and it'll be under Minimalist Launcher for Focus. So, nice. Paul, okay. I say the Microsoft Launcher at this point. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's okay, and it's transitioning into something better. But I, no, I if I if I usually use Google phones. Uh, I like the stock Pixel experience you get, or the Same. yeah the stock Pixel experience that Google provides. Um, if I'm using a non-Google phone, I'll often try to find a launcher that can approximate that. Um, so I've, try, I've tried a bunch of different ones, but I, I don't know that I, I mean, I, I, I don't know that I could recommend one that I prefer. Um, but I like the idea of a minimalist uh, launcher for sure. Nice. And then this question is from Name is Mark. He was wondering if the iPhone from 2016 is good for cinematography, but I kind of wanted to open that question of what uh, phone do you think has really good video quality and photo quality? Your favorite phone for photos and video. Well, I mean, if video matters, you have to get an iPhone, right? I mean, don't even- Android Samsung's getting better. Probably. I feel like yeah. Samsung's gotten much better at video. But yeah, I think those are the two best. If you don't care about video, I'd say the Pixel is really good too. I'm not a yeah. huge fan of Samsung or Huawei's color science. I think they have a magnificent hardware, but their color science, and maybe that's a personal and regional thing. They just, they're, they're very warm um, and very smooth for me. Uh, I, but I really like what Samsung has done more recently with their phones. Um, the LG V60, which is a phone that I'm currently reviewing right now, has granular manual controls for video. And I've talked to some of my YouTube friends. They really like this phone for just taking out and filming YouTube videos. Uh, LG is kind of become more of an underdog in the U.S. in terms of phone sales and their scaling back production of their G series flagship. So this is a phone now that they're going to put everything into. And um, it's actually a lot more affordable than the Samsung phones. So might be something worth checking out, but I agree with Renee. The pixels are great for photos, but they're just not, when it comes to video, they're only good for like the, you know, captured, capturing family kind of video, like the stuff that you want for yourself, but not the stuff that you want to put out professionally. So. Hmm. Yeah, I think if this person is an iPhone user and is wondering about this older iPhone, uh, this would be one of those cases where actually upgrading might make sense. I, the, mm -hmm. the new iPhone video capabilities are pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, this next question um, is, is a pretty big one. Um, where does everyone see themselves in five to ten years, career and life-wise? Oh, boy. <laughs> Hopefully out in a crowd of people having a good time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, at the yeah. beach looking, looking uh, stones. That's what <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I hope to be hanging out with my kid. Um, she's going to be probably five-ish around then. So we'll see what she's into. Hopefully she's into computers. Maybe she's into dancing. Maybe she's into... Biking, I don't know. We'll see what she's into. Um, and by then, I I hope to have some new equipment. Maybe have a little more of a burgeoning home business. You know, I I have some. I hope to 
keep doing the podcast that I'm doing. Maybe I'll have an- another podcast by then. Maybe I'll have a video mm-hmm. show. Who knows? Mm-hmm. I have ideas in my head. Um, it'd be nice. So we'll see what so- happens. I hope to still have my house because fire season is coming. So oh, yeah. sorry to be grim, yeah. but you know. Oh. Hmm. I oof, I'll be an empty nester because my child will have just gone to college. Hopefully, right. provided <laughs> all goes well. Um, <laughs> so I, at that point in time, I'll probably pack up and and start traveling. So my my whole goal is to have spend like six months in different cities, and that's that's the plan. So we'll see if it happens. Hmm. That's actually. Yeah, what we're thinking about as well. And in five years, my daughter hopefully will be out of college. She's about to go to college. Um, assuming that's still a thing in you know September yeah. or whatever. But uh, yeah, I mean that's the goal is to kind of split time, you know, and um, prefer you know international and then domestic. So I guess we'll see. For me, yeah, it's just not- I spent the last two. Sorry. Oh no, I was going to say you're not making me feel you know, comfortable because you're still there and that's where I'm, I'm going to be where you are now in five years. So I'm like, why are not you start it yet? Second, gonna second kid <laughs> We're all going to rotate. Yeah. Uh, for me, I, like I said, I just spent two years building up a, a video channel for future, like some 400 odd videos and now I'm starting over. So I'm hoping in five years I can look back and, and have reaccomplished a lot of what I accomplished over the last five years. Yeah, sure. Yeah. That's really fun. And then I, I kind of wanted to open the floor up to you guys. I know this is the first time some of you guys have video chatted with each other and met each other. Do you guys have any questions for other uh, Twit hosts or other Twit shows? You know I asked Renee where he got his likes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know if Andy Anako is the great podcast co-host or the greatest podcast co-host. Wow. Uh, the greatest. And I can speak <laughs> from that firsthand. We get to share because- him. <laughs> yeah, we have joint custody. We, we, get, we do get to share him. It's true. <laughs> um, Andy is great, and we usually we usually talk for like half an hour before we record. So for me and him, it's become our weekly hangout where we're just like, "How's Thanks life?" To, um, and it's usually me telling him about Andy. my problems. <laughs> I used to live in Massachusetts, so I'd go to Panera Bread and Dedham, and he would hang out there because at the time. They had free Wi-Fi, and that was very rare. And they had plugs, which was also pretty rare. So <laughs> he'd always he'd set up his little camp there, and I would go in to get bagels, and we'd you know I'd just say hi to him <laughs> or whatever. But by the way, I worked at Panera Bread for two years in college. Really? So if anybody wants to know the secrets, I baked there. So. <laughs> Did Andy so and my daughter Paul works there right now? That's the question I have immediately. <laughs> I'm sorry. I said my daughter actually works there now. So they're obviously their stores are mostly closed. So mm-hmm. every Friday she can go in and they give them um, bread and soup. Did it? <laughs> like this is, you know, I know they just, that's what happened. I want to know. I know you're... Recording, they went off to go get bread and soup. I want to know the Panera secrets. What's your favorite um, bread from Panera? What is the what is that French toast bagel? Is a French, French toast, toast bagel? bagel wow. Yeah, French toast. I used bagel. to like the That's Asiago right. cheese bagel. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that is a good bagel. We don't have any of this. We have a place that's called Panera, but it's a Bengali restaurant, and I was very confused at first because I thought we were <laughs> finally getting the change, nice. but it was completely different. What's the um, What's the breakfast chain you have in uh, Canada? I can't think of the name of it. Tim Hortons. Uh, we have a Tim, Hortons? Hortons. Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons. That's our, yeah, that's our I, version I of Dunkin' Donuts. Describe, yeah. Tim it's Hortons disgusting. is where breakfast goes to die. <laughs> exactly. I was very you disappointed. Just, you just when broke I... the hearts of a million hockey players. I I'm, I'm so sorry. Tim Hortons, that's right. Didn't didn't Burger King buy Tim Hortons, or I'm just I it's don't know. It's weird. Why. It's co-owned, and I think in a way that it's American, <laughs> where they don't have to pay taxes, and Canadian, where they don't have to pay taxes. It's like some weird oh, corporate boy. structure. It's like a pyramid scheme for for taxes. Yeah, they both own each other, depending on the jurisdiction. Yeah. Right. I have a question for Renee. Yes. Renee, if you were to use an if you were to use non Apple devices, your setup, computer, phone, what would you what what do you think you could 
you know, live with, work with. So what would I you actually like? do this. So I, every year I buy the, I used to buy the Nexus and then now every mm -hmm. year I buy the Pixel. Uh, and I have a Pixel 4 right now, which I really like. I did, it's the first time I didn't get the XL, but I think I made the right choice going with the yeah. small one this year. And because of VR, um, that this does not work on the Mac. The, you, know, the, the, you can develop VR stuff now on the mm -hmm. Mac, but I'm a big fan of VR. So just whatever a uh, good friend of mine is putting together a new system, he went completely AMD, um, Threadripper, and and I'm du going to duplicate that so I can do just, I, I just want to live in a gaming. virtual world if I can't live in this one, basically. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. It's close I have to a holodeck. And then I heard a question, um, Renee, where do you get your lights? So I was using Hue lights, but uh, I shoot video at 24 frames per second and at 180 degrees, they would just roll and people would complain about it. So I've replaced them. The, these lights behind me are Quasar Science, which uh, I think I got at either B&H or Adorama. It's always a gamble who will actually ship to Canada and when. But there's I have a couple two foot and a couple four foot of those. And then just out of camera, I have... The um, well, I just remember the name and I totally forgot it. The digital Sputnik Voyagers, yes. and I I am that lame that they said they were using them on the Mandalorian, so I immediately bought them. Uh, <laughs> they were cheaper, and you, they can do way more amazing things. Like they're they're you can unplug them and they have a battery. There you can put them underwater. You can take a photograph and it'll replicate the pattern. But I feel like I have to have Alex Lindsay over to visit to explain to me how to use them because they're not. <laughs> Like they're not like hue bulbs where I can just paint, like move my fingers and the colors change. They have a lot more science behind them. So those are not being used right now, but these I can just press the button and change the colors. So that's what I've been using. Oh, nice. And then, oh, oh, go ahead, Paul. Yeah, I just said they look good. Oh, thank you. It's the Batman poster. It's the, the Christopher Nolan Batman poster look. That's the best I could come up with. Mm. Thanks. And then we are running out of time, but I do have one uh, one last question come in uh, for the shelter in place, work from home, favorite snacks. What are you guys eating? What is what is nourishing oh, your your guys' uh, bodies I, right now? Queso. Oh, queso. Oh, that is great. Okay. Oh, I'm it's so jealous. There, there, there has been one sad queso incident, but. Any of the Twit viewers know that we are Twig viewers know that we are obsessed with queso in my world. Um, so, yeah, queso I'm going is to make up for the disparaging comments I made about Canada early earlier by mentioning <laughs> the greatest food item in the world, which actually comes out of Canada. Maple and let me syrup? just want to get that. It, it's called no, no. Uh, it's called <laughs> Hawkins Cheesies, and th these things are oh. basically like the hard kind of Cheetos, but perfected. And they are the greatest food item that you can possibly have. And uh, I have friends from Poutine. Canada who bring us this food, but I found out recently you can actually order them on Amazon. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. I've never heard of them. I feel like I have to relinquish my citizenship look now. Look this up. They're, they're amazing. <laughs> I will. Canadian they're Smarties very, look very like healthy. M &Ms. It's a very weird, in the dark weird world. <laughs> Um, my husband is just baking like nonstop. So I'm just eating whatever he like gives me. Like last night he gave me a plate of cookies the night before he made sourdough bread. So I'm just eating every lots of carbs around here. So which is, you know, yeah, right. comfort That's food good. in that, you need them. In that case. Comfort yeah, carbs exactly. are the best. Mm -hmm. This is exactly. a good time to experiment if you have like a sous vide or a, um, uh, a hot pot or, well, you know, what an Instapot or, um, you know, you want to bake or whatever. I mean, this is, this is the time. This no, He's so no emotionally invested in sourdough right now. It's, it's yeah. intense. So, <laughs> it, well, it's a very intimate relationship, a person and their starter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I do not feel this. I'm waiting to feel some sort of identification with my starter, but so far I haven't named it. Leo I feel was talking about his starter. Like, I think I everyone's know. making a starter now. Oh, my husband was making TikTok videos with his starter the other night. It was oh we've God. truly hit hit <laughs> hit it here. We're we're going <laughs> we're stuck inside with a newborn, so you know. <laughs> you would be stuck yes. inside regardless. So this is true. Everyone else now just feels your pain. <laughs> That's true. At least I'm not yeah. alone. Oh, there's the link for the Hawkins cheesies. Yeah. Ooh. You'll, th you'll thank me later. So good. Will I? 
Will we though? Or the opposite of thank me, but it will be it will be a strong reaction. I'm like, well, I don't I don't have a Peloton thank you guys so or... much for joining us. <laughs> Looking at these cheesies now. Yeah, we're like mm, so much fun. <laughs> I know. I'm afraid that now like, I won't be able to get them on Amazon, and I'll be upset I mentioned it publicly. Yeah, you just you just did yourself in, Paul. I don't know. <laughs> no. Sorry, guys. I'm I think I'm a a little bit laggy right now. Um, but to wrap it no up really fast, thank you guys again so much for joining us, and I we really appreciate you all being here. And where should we find you guys? FlorenceION.com. YouTube.com slash Renee Ritchie. www.stacyonioT.com. Uh, Thorat.com, which is super easy to spell. Uh, T-H-U-R-R-O-T-T. <laughs> worst brand in the history of brands. Oh, well, I've got Stacy for Purpleless E, so. Yep. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Thanks, Be everybody, safe. for watching. Yeah, thank you. Good to see you guys. Good to, to see, see you, you all. <laughs>